What's going on YouTube? This is Ribo back at the bench today, and this time I've got another cut or carry knife review. Today looking at the Spyderco Brower. A little bit of an overdue review for me. I've had this knife for a little while and just keep meaning to film a review, but unfortunately life just keeps getting in the way. So if you uh, are, are kind of watching this close to when, it's, when it was released, you'll notice that I've gotten well away from my one video a month, I'm sorry, one video a week. Uh, goal. I think I'm still doing one a month, but um, I I'd like to do one a week, and I was doing it pretty steadily there for a while. Um, but uh, life is just really insane right now, um, and so this is kind of taking a back seat a little bit, but um, I want to keep it going and definitely have some plans for the future, just trying to get through kind of a busy uh, season right now. So anyway, um, th another exciting update for me at least is that I just upgraded the shop lighting with some incredible LED lights. Um, so uh, these are actually just the overhead lights now. There's, there's no kind of auxiliary light or anything. Um, and I think it looks pretty good. So you'll have to tell me in the comments below if you'd like the light or not. But I was super, super excited to get some better shop lights out here. Um, and I think they're, they're doing really well. Um, so anyway, on to actual knife reviews. So this is the Spyderco Brower. So I picked this up in a trade a while back, um, have been carrying it ever since, uh, off and on, and uh, want to share some thoughts. Uh, before we get into that, let me go ahead and do a size comparison. And I just grabbed a couple Spydercos at random. So uh, we have the FRN Chaparral. Um, you'll notice this lighting is already exposing uh, the fact that I don't keep my knives super, super clean, um, which tells you that I use them, um, but I, I probably don't take care of them as I should. So sorry about that. Um, and also the Spyderco Manix 2 Lightweight. Super, super excited that I finally was able to grab one of these for myself. You'll notice that in the video that I reviewed the, the Manix 2 Lightweight, um, I was borrowing that knife. Uh, I knew that I wanted one and I finally found the exact one I wanted, which was the XHP brown version. Uh, not going to not gonna promise it'll be my only uh, Manix 2 Lightweight because it is an awesome knife. Um, but anyway, uh, you'll see the Brower is, uh, is a good size. I mean, the Manix 2 Lightweight is, is kind of ridiculously large, but if I were to put the FRN Chaparral out here and also throw in something like the Dragonfly, um, you'll see the Brower is, is the biggest of the group, definitely closer to the Chaparral, um, but it's a good overall size. So it, it's not obnoxiously large or anything, um, but it is, a, it is a really great just all around EDC. Uh, nothing hard use necessarily, but just a great, great uh, pocket carry and, and overall a really good size. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and get into it. I should probably also show the flip side because this is not a uh, this is not G10 on both sides. Um, this is a uh, frame lock. So this is titanium on one side and then this uh, G10 on the other. You can see that right there, uh, which is a little bit uncharacteristic for Spyderco, um, at least at least what I'm used to with Spyderco. Um, so kind of cool to see, kind of interesting. Um, but, uh, yeah. All right. So let's get into it. Uh, things that I like and dislike about the Spyderco Brower. Um, first of all, uh, even before I get into that, let me just say too, uh, if you are new to this knife, it is called the Spyderco Brower because Brower is the last name of the man who designed it right there. Man, look how dirty that knife is. Anyway, um, so that's why it's called the Brower. Uh, okay, so things that I like. Uh, first of all, um, I really like the blade, which is something that I, I feel like I say about pretty much every spider code that I review. Um, but this one particularly so, and it's because it's it's kind of not your traditional spider code blade. Um, and I love spider code blades, so even if it was, it would be an awesome thing. But this one isn't. Um, so this one is a little bit of a um, you know drop point style, it's not a leaf style, it's not kind of your classic Spyderco, uh, much more of a traditional kind of drop point blade, uh, maybe even spear point, um, but uh, just a really, really nice uh, kind of EDC blade. And I, I think it works really, really well in this knife, and I think it works really, really well with the Spidey hole there. Um, it, I just, overall, I think the blade, uh, for what I've used it at least, um, has been really excellent. Uh, it's not too large, uh, so if you if you want to do things like cutting open boxes and stuff, it's going to give you the precision you need for for little tasks. 
uh, but I've also sliced, you know, a fair number of, of apples and, and peaches and stuff like that. Um, and it, it does really, really well for just kind of everyday stuff, whether you're, you know, opening boxes or you're in the kitchen or, or whatever, you just need something quick. Um, the blade is just a great overall size. Um, and, and this is actually an example where I'm, I'm super happy to have a forward finger choil that does eat into a lot of that blade uh, because it's so natural. So, I mean, another thing I love is the, the ergonomics on this knife are just really excellent. I mean, you would, you would probably look at this and, and I think if you were to compare this to something um, like the Manix 2 Lightweight, you'd look at this one and you'd say, you know, the Manix 2 Lightweight is kind of known to be just a super comfy knife in the hand uh, because of these deep choils and the Brower doesn't quite look like that. And so you might wonder, uh, particularly on a smaller knife, if that's gonna translate, um, especially you've got this weird kind of spear point coming out of there. But man, for my hands at least, it works really, really well. And I think partially due to the fact that it's a frame lock and you've got this rounded titanium over here, you can see kind of all of these rounded corners and chamfered corners here. Um, you've also got a fairly soft round kind of forward finger choil there. Um, but it's just super, super comfortable in my hands. Uh, it just, it, it does really, really well. I don't ever really find myself, you know, grabbing back here. I know sometimes with knives that have the forward finger choil, um, there is kind of a, you know, sometimes you're, you're pulled between two different hand styles. Uh, there's really one, one grip that, that just feels really great in my hands and it's that right there. Um, so I think it's, it's just a very efficient uh, grip. It's a it's a very efficient uh, use uh, of of space, um, and I think it does that that really really well. So uh, blade is awesome. Uh, ergonomics is, are, are also awesome, um, and uh, and so I'll keep going. Um, the carry is also great. Now, personally, um, you know the spoon clips never my favorite, and everyone knows that. Um, I don't know that it's visually the right choice for this knife. It looks a little bit out of character, uh, at least to my eye. Um, it doesn't look bad. Um, you know, I, I don't think it, it stands out necessarily, but I would probably prefer uh, kind of like a, I don't know, something like that. Maybe the, the fold over. Um, that's not, I guess, the fold over wire clip, but this one is. Um, or something, something else. Uh, I. I I don't know. It, it doesn't totally work for me. I also don't think it looks bad necessarily, but something about the, the spoon clip on top of the titanium cheapens the look a little bit to me. Um, this is, I think the last time I checked, like a $180 knife. Um, so it, for whatever reason, it just loses a little bit of the, the uh, high quality feel, not high quality, but anyway, you know what I'm saying. If not, it doesn't really matter. Um, so the spoon clip's not my favorite, but uh, I think the knife carries really, really well. Um, so you have a very um, non-traditional Spyderco profile here. And I'll just throw some other Spydercos up just so you can get a sense for what I'm talking about. I should have grabbed some more of my Spydercos from inside, but um, you know, with the Spyderco uh, Spidey hole on most of these, a lot of the Spydercos, and I'm thinking really specifically, like think about the classic Delica. Um, where you've got that really, you know, you've got that spider hole that just takes the profile way out of the knife. Uh, it's somewhat muted on the chaparral here. It's definitely there on the Manix uh, and pretty much every other spider co. This one reminds me, and it would be great if I had brought mine out, but like the Spidey Chef, where it's just a little bit more hidden in the profile, um, still perfectly, um, you know, accessible on this side. Um, it may be a little bit harder to access there, uh, but uh, the profile in general is, is not what I think of when I think of a Spyderco knife. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. I think it's very distinctive for Spyderco to have that, that other profile, but um, this being a designer, uh, you know, branded knife um, and, and being a little bit different from Spyderco's typical line anyway, I think it really works. Um, and, in, and what it does is it makes uh, the carry for this great. So, I mean, it's very, very slim, very lightweight, uh, you know, titanium, very lightweight, plus the G10 there. Um, so very lightweight, but also that just nice uh, kind of lighter uh, profile there. Um, it's, a, it's a joy to carry. And I mean, the spoon clip for all my issues with it, uh, it, it carries very nicely. It's easy to get in and out of the pocket and it looks fine. 
Um, and so the, the carry on this is, is really excellent. Uh, no, no complaints there at all. Um, the other thing that works really, really well here with the carry is that you've got uh, the, the, the clip coming down just on the raw titanium. And so you don't have it on the G10. Obviously you can reverse if you're, if you're left-handed, but um, you know, in the, in the stock configuration there, uh, it, it, you know, it makes that work a lot better. Um, and so that, that, that does very well. So uh, for me, you, you can kind of see where this is going. It cuts well, it carries well. Um, and, and so you can probably, probably tell where this is going. And I like the blade. Um, other things I like. Uh, so I, to my knowledge, this knife is available in just one scale color. It's this forest green color, um, which is, you know, dangerous game to play, uh, especially since one of the cool things about Spydercos is you can kind of collect them in every color. Um, which is ridiculous, but uh, I do it too. Um, but but I really like the forest green on this. Uh, I think it's a cool color choice, uh, kind of understated, um, but I like it. That's just kind of an aesthetic thing, but I, I like the color choice. Um, you can get some some aftermarket scales for these. I, I have one. I, I don't really do, I, I really like stock uh, knives. I don't really do a ton of uh, customization after I get them. Um, so not my thing really, but you can, uh, get some aftermarket, you know, single scale for, for, for this knife. Um, if that's your thing. Other things I like, uh, I can't remember if I mentioned this in the ergos, but the little cutout here, uh, is very, very nice and, and does lend to, uh, ergonomics, uh, number one. So when your, your finger wraps around there, it does make that feel a lot better. Uh, but two, it makes opening the knife really, really nice, uh, because, since that uh, spider hole is, uh, you know, somewhat hidden, uh, the full thing is not accessible like it is, you know, with, with or pretty much is with the, the chaparral there and definitely is with the Mannix, um, it, it makes it very, very easy to access. Um, so the deployment is super easy and I, you know, you can flick the knife. Um, of course, I, I can't do it on camera because I'm at a weird angle, but you can flick the knife open without any issues. Um, I tend to, with Spydercos, just kind of do the slow the slow roll. I think ever since I started carrying a Sabenza, um, flicking knives open just isn't my thing anymore. Um, so I've been ruined. Um, but the slow roll works, flicking it open works, uh, which is great. I don't think you can really Spidey flick this. I say that and I know guys can do it. I'm not even gonna try because I'm terrible at that stuff. Um, so the deployment's great, uh, but actually um, disengaging the knife is, is one of the greatest joys about this. Um, and that's because uh, for this, uh, this frame lock here, you can see that you have this lock bar insert um, and it's slightly scalloped or jimped or whatever you wanna call that uh, to allow you to get some purchase on it. Um, but you have the titanium here and then you have uh, that lock bar insert so that you don't get any lock stick. Um, and, and it just is super, super smooth. Uh, plus, uh, you have a, a fairly light uh, titanium bar, uh, which, you know, I, I do worry a little bit about bending out, but I mean, as long as you're not abusing your knife, you should be totally fine. But the disengage is just super, super smooth. Uh, to me, one of the best things about this knife, uh, which is, you know, not, not something you typically hear. Um, but just super easy to disengage. I, I think it's probably because um, <laughs> there are a few things, well, that's not, maybe not fair. There have been knives before that I really liked, but the, uh, the disengage to, to take the knife down was just frustrating, uh, where it's like, it's just that one little detail and it's usually not a big deal. But when it's hard to access the lock bar or there's lock stick or something, it just makes it so frustrating because it's just a small detail, but it can be so incredibly annoying. Um, and so when you see it done right like this, uh, it's just really awesome. Honestly, I, I, I kind of can't believe I'm going to say this, but the disengage on this reminds me of one knife. <laughs> it reminds me of the Hinderer XM18. Um, that's how good I think it is. Uh, so I, I really do uh, like that. All right, anything else for things that I like? I don't think so. Um, things that I dislike. Uh, I've tried to think about this um, and, and really there's just one thing and it's super subjective and I can't even put my finger on it. Um, there's something 
There's something funky about this knife, but not necessarily in the way that I usually applaud Spyderco's funk. Um, I can't tell if it's a good thing or a bad thing. And, and honestly, I think it may just be the fact that it is a frame lock that has the G10 on one side and the titanium on the other. Um, but there's just something either aesthetically about this knife or something, I don't know, I don't know how to put my, my finger on it, that just, it doesn't, I don't tend to reach for it. It is an excellent, excellent, excellent knife. Um, it is one of those knives that uh, one could really honestly carry as this, you know, single knife. A, a knife guy could make this their, their one knife and I think it would do very, very well. Um, it's not the most expensive. Um, it, it's not the absolute greatest at any one area, but it's just all around really fantastic. It's got great opening action, closing action. It's got an awesome blade. It's got excellent steel with the S30V, uh, which is just, you know, it's great. Um, it's got a great textured G10. Um, it's titanium. It's got uh, the lock bar insert. Like it just, it's just functionally great. It's awesome. Um, but there's just some, for some reason, I just don't reach for it. Uh, I, I've just, for whatever reason, um, and I, the only thing I can think of is that it's kind of this, you know, I'm just, I've never been a fan of, of the, you know, scale on one side and the, the raw titanium on the other. It's just never been my thing, which is kind of ridiculous, but that's the only thing I can think of. Um, but there's something that I can't put my finger on that makes me, um, just not think about it that often when I'm looking for a knife to carry. Um, but that's really the only thing that I can think of to critique this knife, and I can't even think of a way to articulate it. So take that for what you will. Uh, final conclusions, cut or carry. Um, this is a very easy carry for me. Um, th this is a great knife. Uh, it's one of those knives I was not looking to purchase. Uh, I had heard about it, but visually I just kind of wrote it off and was like, it's not really for me. Um, but it was offered to me in a trade, and I was like, what the heck? Like. Let's, let's do it and I'll just get a video out of it if nothing else. And I don't know, many, many months later, I still have the knife and I still carry it somewhat frequently. Not super frequently because of what I just described, but I still do carry it and I still do really, really like it. Um, and I've been debating like, you know, I have a pretty large knife collection. Do I need this in there? And I haven't brought myself to sell it yet. Um, I might, can't decide. Um, but it's an excellent knife. It, it is really, really good. Um, it, it is not the flashiest of knives, and uh, it, it definitely doesn't have that kind of classic Spyderco fun factor or funk factor, where it's like it's available in all these different configurations and it's goofy and all this stuff. It is just a, a fairly basic but really, really good knife. Um, and, and that's really all you need uh, in the knife hobby, honestly but that's not all we want, so we press on. Anyway, uh, hope you've enjoyed this review, and I'll see you next time.